This week at Starbase, crews remain hard at work building out the infrastructure for Pad 2, making progress with the groundwork for Gigabay, and rebuilding the infrastructure at the Massey Outpost. With only four months left in the year now, is SpaceX making enough progress to allow for a Starship Block 3 launch in 2025, or will Flight 11 from Pad 1 be the last we'll see this year? Well, let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. Starting off with construction activity at the launch site, across the road from Pad 1, work continued at the future site of the air separation plant, with concrete form work going up quickly. New cross-brace vaporizers were delivered to the launch site as SpaceX works to replace the older, unreinforced vaporizer hardware that were prone to breaking during launch. The older, less durable vaporizers were loaded onto trucks and shipped out, leaving Starbase for parts unknown. The last two sections of the trench's steel structure were installed this week. The trench walls will be filled with concrete to complete the flame trench as SpaceX continues its push to bring Starship Block 3 into service. Workers began installing the stabilizer arms on the chopsticks on Tower 2, which will be used to keep the ships and boosters steady while they're being lifted. The installation started with the vertical element, followed by the adjustable diagonal brace completing the assembly. Workers began installing the stabilizer on the second chopstick a day later, repeating the process. Over at the build site, as workers continue to iterate on the process of building super heavy boosters, a new work stand was moved into Mega Bay 1 ahead of the ramp up in production of Block 3 boosters. Another Gigabay piling cap concrete pour began, joining together the foundation piles in another section of the new factory space with a thick, heavily reinforced mat of concrete. All in all, the pour lasted 22 hours with a whopping 343 truckloads of concrete placed for this section of Gigabay's foundation pile cap. Replacement test site hardware for Massey Outpost continues to be built and fitted out. A new liquid oxygen pump support frame was finished and delivered from Sanchez and put into place. The chopsticks at Pad 1 were put through a small battery of opening and closing tests before being lowered down to the hard stop. The process was repeated again for another test set, validating their readiness ahead of Flight 11. The gas generators for Pad 2, used to drive the deluge system, were put through a battery of tests this week. The system was activated 14 times in all, continuing the effort to qualify the new launch pad for flight ops. An interesting pillar was brought into the build site and hauled into Star Factory. The structure looks like it might be a crane pedestal, but it's hard to be sure. 36 loads of water were delivered to refill the deluge system as SpaceX prepares for another round of static fire tests ahead of Flight 11. As the new propellant farm hardware enters service, older hardware is being retired. Two smaller obsolete storage tanks, previously used for pressure boosting in the liquid oxygen system, were removed from the launch site. A new crane was assembled and erected at the launch site this week. Smaller cranes like this are frequently used to help assemble larger ones, but they're also useful for moving around the large amounts of heavy equipment and hardware at the complex. Inside the Star Factory halls, a large number of Starlink simulators were unloaded from one of the dispenser boxes and stacked inside. It's not yet known if SpaceX wants to repeat the flight profile of Flight 10, or if they plan to perform another orbital flight demo for the final Block 2 ship before moving on to Block 3. This week at the Cape, we saw two Falcon 9 Starlink launches. After bringing back Booster 1095 from the Starlink 10-56 mission, just read the instructions headed back out after just three hours in port to support the Starlink Group 10-14 launch, with Bob following the landing ship out to sea. On August 31st, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 for the Starlink Group 10-14 mission, adding another 28 Starlink satellites to the constellation. With a successful launch and recovery, both the fairing halves were brought back to port, which just read the instructions returning a day later and offloading the Falcon 9 booster at the docks. SpaceX is a short fall of Gravitas and Doug supported the other Starlink launch this week, with Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lifting off from the Group 10-12 mission on September 3rd, carrying another 28 Starlink satellites into orbit. One of the fairing halves, serial number 185, has now launched 33 times. As the fairing flight leader, it now has a crown painted over its serial number. In other space news this week, the crew of the Harvey Stone practice fire suppression operations, preparing for potential new Glenn booster landings on Blue Origin's Jacqueline landing barge. 
United Launch Alliance announced that their next Project Kuiper launch is scheduled for September 25th, continuing the build-out of Amazon's telecommunications satellite constellation. Over at Launch Complex 39A, a new LR11000 crane, the same type as the one at Starbase, raised its boom for the first time. The crane was used to begin the assembly of the Flame Bucket Support A-frame at the Starship launch pad, currently under construction at Cape Canaveral. An additional pair of cryo tanks were also delivered this week through Port Canaveral to the Term Basin where they were unloaded. NASA announced that astronaut Megan MacArthur retired from the space agency on the 29th, capping off a 25-year career with NASA's astronaut corps having lodged 212 days in space. During her career at NASA, she flew to space on Space Shuttle Atlantis for STS-125, where she became one of the last people to ever lay hands on the Hubble Space Telescope. She also flew on SpaceX Crew-2 on Crew Dragon Endeavour. German space startup rocket factory Augsburg showed off their third stage shaker bed test as they worked to verify that their rocket is ready for the rigors of flight. The FAA completed its final environmental assessment for a filing to increase launches from SLC-40 and SpaceX has been approved to increase Falcon flight operations from 50 to 120 launches a year. They've also been approved for the construction of a landing zone where they can land up to 34 boosters annually. SpaceX's Cargo Dragon also completed its first test of their new International Space Station reboost capability. The modified Dragon has a pair of Draco thrusters, which they fired for 5 minutes and 3 seconds to raise the perigee of the station's orbit by 1 mile. A series of longer orbit raising burns is planned during the Dragon's stay at the station. JetBlue became the first commercial airliner to add Project Kuiper-powered internet service to their jets, which will provide connectivity for in-flight Wi-Fi. Spanish space startup PLD Space showed off their inner stage for the Mira 5 rocket. PLD is planning to make their first orbital launch attempt with Mira 5 in the first quarter of 2026. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy selected 20-year NASA veteran Amit Keshatriya as the agency's new Associate Administrator, which is the agency's top civil service role. In his long career at NASA, Amit has served as a mission control director and performed program and planning implementation for the Artemis program. A Goldman Sachs post on X this week announced Firefly Aerospace's initial public offering was the largest space and defense technology IPO ever, reaching a billion dollars in shareholder valuation. A new Texas state law has given control over highway closure to the city of Starbase, leaving SpaceX in control of road and beach closures for flight operations. While this has ceded Cameron County's authority over closures of roads and beaches to Starbase, all of the existing limits on when and how many road closures are allowed are still in place. Going forward, future road closures will be announced on the city of Starbase's website. And there you have it, another Avid Space update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.